looking back in hindsight, maybe the warning signs were already there. I wasn't really aware of emotional abuse then as I am now. It was still obviously a massive surprise when it did happen. At first, it was what seemed to be a kind of nice relationship. Um, but quite quickly, um, there was little signs that just started creeping in. The majority of it was a lot of emotional abuse that did escalate over time. And it made me start to really question myself and it affected my self-esteem. And I was just constantly finding myself walking on eggshells because I didn't know what was coming next. The evening when the physical abuse happened, like in a lot of cases, it was alcohol fueled. We had an argument um, and he just flipped on me, um, repeatedly punched me in the face. I tried to defend myself, but I was unable to. Um, it did only happen the once, um, thankfully, but it was enough to really almost scar me for life, if you, you know, physically as well as mentally. The last evening before I was able to get away from him, it caused some horrible injuries to myself, but it also got my, my son, who was about seven months at the time, out of bed to watch it. Um, even to this day, I still remember seeing the look on his face of fear. Um, and it was that look that really made me think that I need to get out for my son and for my safety. When the incident happened, I was fortunate. I went straight back to my parents' house. They didn't live too far away. So I was lucky that I had that safe haven to go to. I think at that point of my life, because I was young, it probably would have been easy to go back to him if I didn't have the support from people. It was really difficult not to go back. It made me feel like I couldn't be a good parent and that I needed him. There'd been a lot of economic abuse and he'd uh, built up a lot of debt in my name. And it made me feel, because I was on maternity leave at the time, that I needed to be with him to be able to have money to bring up my son. But my family and my friends were there for me and uh, domestic abuse services and I couldn't have done it without them really. I've always been very open about what happened to me. I'll, I've always told people um, who didn't know me at the time. I'm always happy to talk about it now with anybody as well. The one that really always stuck with me was a lady who confessed to me that I would get used to it because she'd got used to it from her husband and she had three children and it was really harrowing to think that she, she'd accepted that in her life. I think before I felt like I couldn't do it, I felt like there was no way to get away. But there's so many options out there and a key thing is the National Domestic Abuse Helpline which is run by Refuge. Now I know about Refuge and all the work they can do, that's what I'd be plugging to people, I'd be telling them to ring the Domestic Abuse Helpline. I'd Tell them to go on the website, you know, not just suffering at home, thinking that this is it for them because there's so much support out there. My marathon is going to be split up. I'm going to be starting off with my running club. There's such a supportive uh, group of people. And then the next part I'm going to be doing with my son because he's the real reason why I'm doing all this um, is to give him a good life. My friends and family have been so generous and supportive of me with donations, but also with time, um, looking after my son, putting up with me whining about runs in the freezing cold because they knew that it was a good personal challenge as well as the, the monetary gain for refuge from it. My advice, if anybody does suspect a friend or a loved one um, experiencing domestic abuse, it's just be there for them and, and support them and empower them to make the decisions for themselves. If anyone is watching this and it's ringing alarm bells, all I will say to you is you aren't alone, which is what you need to remember. It's, it's not your fault and the help is there. Please seek the help.